Hello students, today we will discuss about the norma basalis part of the skull. Now this norma basalis we will discuss in the three session. So let us discuss the first part of the norma basalis. So what is norma basalis? When you will have the study of cranium without mandible from the inferior aspect. So when you are seeing the skull from below in that uh, case this study is known as exterior of skull study under the heading of norma basalis. Now this area extends from the incisor teeth. So these are your incisor teeth. Now from the incisor teeth up to the superior knuckle lines which are present here, this whole area is known as norma basalis. Now when you will see the laterally, where you will have the extension of norma basalis, so you will reach up to this zygomatic arch and the mastoid process. So this area of the exterior of the skull, which you are seeing from the inferior aspect is known as norma basalis. Now, how to read this norma basalis? So for our convenience, we have divided this into the three part and when you will have the, these three part, they are purely for the study purpose. So how you will divide these three part? The anterior part is formed by the hard palate. So this is your hard palate and this is the alveolar arch. So this area is known as anterior part of your norma basal. Then you will have the middle and posterior parts. Now how will you divide? For that you have an imaginary transverse or horizontal line that you have to draw through the anterior margin of foramen magnum. So from here you will pass a horizontal line. Now in this way, you are having the three different parts of the norma basalis. This is the anterior part. This hole is become the middle part and this area is known as posterior part of norma basalis, clear? So we have the three different lectures. We will see the features of anterior part of norma basalis. You have the features of middle part of norma basalis and features of the posterior part of norma basalis. So in this lecture, we will discuss the anterior part of norma basalis first. So in this anterior part of norma basalis, what are the important things which you should know? First is the alveolar arch. Now you know that the maxilla bone is going to form your uh, upper jaw and whenever you are talking about the alveolar arch, this alveolar arch is having a socket and these sockets are for the roots of your upper teeth. So these are the sockets which you will find and the area which are uh, which present or which lodges these socket is known as alveolar arch. Now in the middle portion you will find this hard palate. Now you know that palate is made up of two part when you will see the palate palate is having the hard palate anteriorly and the soft palate posteriorly. Now when you will see this hard palate and when you are seeing the norma basalis, you will find that it is formed by the two bones. One is the contribution of maxilla and second is the contribution of palatine bone. So the major contribution that means anterior two third contribution comes from the maxilla and posterior one third contribution comes from palatine bone. Now these areas of the maxilla are known as palatine processes and these areas of palatine bone are known as horizontal plates of palatine bone, clear? So whenever you are reading this hard palate, you have to keep this thing in mind that anterior two third part is made up of the maxilla and which part of the maxilla? Answer is palatine process of maxilla. Why palatine process? Because posteriorly it is going to make a joint with the palatine bone. That's why these process processes are known as palatine process of maxilla. So when you are having the two bones, maxilla and palatine bone, but obviously there has to be the joints and these joints are known as sutures. And when you will see the shape of this joint, you will find that this joint is form a cruciform shape. Now cruciform means a cross-like uh, suture. 
So here you can see that this is a cross which you can appreciate in the hard pellet. Now when you will see this cross, this is the most important question for your exam. Name the different sutures or the joints forming this cross. So here you can see that intermaxillary suture. That means the suture between the two palatine processes of maxilla is known as intermaxillary suture. Then you will have interpalatine. Now this is the interpalatine suture which is formed by the two horizontal plates of palatine bone. And lastly, you will have palatomaxillary suture. Now, palatomaxillary suture means this joint, it, it is formed by the hair, palatine bone and maxillary bone. So, this is your maxilla, this is your palatine bone. So, this suture is named as palatomaxillary suture. Clear? Now, what next comes here is that when you are seeing the hard palate, you are able to appreciate that there are number of small pits are present. Now these pits, you can see here, these pits are for the glands and these are known as palatine glands. Then you are having a very important feature. Now here you can see in each and every bone, you will find a, a space is there, a foramen is there and this foramen is known as incisive foramen or sometimes it is also known as incisive fossa. Now this incisive foramen or fossa is a deep fossa and it is situated anteriorly in the median plane. So you can see that in this median plane at the anterior end you will find this foramen. Now the, there are two incisive canals which are having the opening or they are piercing this incisive fossa or incisive foramen. So here in this hard palate, what are the important features which you are able to understand that this is your sutures which are cruciform in shape and this area is formed by the maxilla in two third, palatine bone in one third and here anteriorly you will have the incisive fossa or foramen. Now there are two very important questions for your exam. You have these questions in the spotting mark the greater and lesser palatine foramina. Now when you are seeing this hard palate from the below, on both the side posteriorly you will find the two big foramens. These are known as greater palatine foramen and just behind this you will find a small foramen which may be more than one in number, they are lesser palatine foramen. Clear? So, greater palatine foramen are one in number on each side and they are situated behind the lateral part of palatomaxillary suture. So this is the palatomaxillary suture and behind this palatomaxillary suture in lateral part you will find these foramens. Clear? Now the important thing is that when you will see the dry skull you will find that along this alveolar arch on inner side you will find a groove. And this groove is going towards the incisive foramen. So this groove starts from greater palatine foramen and then this groove is going anteriorly approaching this incisive foramen. Now you will have the lesser palatine foramen which may be more than one in number. So it, you may have two foramen or three foramen on uh, one side and they lies behind the greater palatine foramen and the important thing is that the foramen which is actually you are seeing here that is your uh, lesser palatine foramen marks a bone and this bone which actually is having the lesser palatine foramen this bone is your pyramidal process of palatine bone. So this question is important for your exam that pyramidal process of palatine bone perforated by which foramen. So pyramidal process lies behind the maxilla. Now this is the posterior end of the maxilla. Now behind the posterior end of maxilla, you will find the foramens which are present here. And these foramens are present in the pyramidal process of palatine bone. Then what are the another important features you will have in the hard palate? So there is a one more important thing is known as posterior nasal spine. Now when you will see this hard palate, in midline posteriorly you are able to feel a small projection. Now this projection is known as posterior nasal spine 
and this posterior nasal spine give rise to the attachment to a muscle is known as musculus uvula. Now, when you will open the mouth, and if you'll see this mouth in uh, uh, open mouth in front of the mirror, you will find that there is a midline projection. A small hanging muscle is present in your mouth. Now that is your uvula and inside this uvula you are having a muscle is known as musculus uvulae and that musculus uvulae attached on this projection is known as posterior nasal spine. Then you have the palatine crest. Now palatine crest are present here and these palatine crest are present along the posterior free margin of your hard palate. So where is the posterior free margin? Now these are the posterior free margin of the hard palate. Now just along the posterior free margin of hard palate, you are having these small elevated areas which are known as palatine crest. Clear? Now the important thing is that this crest and this posterior free margin both will give rise to the attachment of palatine aponeurosis. Because when you will see the palate, you know that palate is having the two part. This is the hard palate and posteriorly you will have the soft palate. Now when you will see the soft palate, now the muscles of the soft palate are actually present inside aponeurosis and that is known as palatine aponeurosis. So that palatine aponeurosis which starts from the posterior free margin of hard palate and encloses the muscles of the soft palate and also give place for the insertion of these muscles is attached here. So you will have the attachment of the palatine aponeurosis or you can say anterior end of the soft palate and that's why you will have the anterior hard palate and posterior soft palate. So now at the end of this session of your anterior part of the norma basalis, I think you have the idea that whenever you are having the skull in your hand, you are able to identify the hard palate, you are able to identify the alveolar arch, you should know the posterior nasal spine, palatine crest, cruciform suture and how there is a formation of hard palate. So this is all for the session. Thank you.